Now, I want you to go ahead and steal and learn these strategies and refer to them in the future with your clients or stakeholders so you can seem smarter and ultimately charge more as a designer. So let's go ahead and break down some tactics Microsoft Teams used to crush Slack in the collaboration and messaging space. Now Slack has been around for 10 years and it is known for their beautiful, fun and joyful user experience. Whilst Microsoft Teams was only launched six years ago and it's very Microsoft-y. But this screenshot shows how Microsoft Teams has absolutely killed Slack in terms of daily active users. Oh, and by the way, if you do want to sound smarter, you can use the acronym DAU, that stands for daily active users, or MAU for monthly active users. Now Slack has been growing, but it sits at around 18 million DAU, and it has taken them 10 years to get to this point. Here, we see teams skyrocketing to over 250 million DAU in just six years. So what strategies were involved and how can you steal these for your own projects and reference them? First off, Microsoft Teams also has a free tier like Slack, but with a slight difference. Now, since Microsoft has been growing significantly over the years, generating hundreds of billions of dollars every single year, has over 13 billion in cash just chilling in the bank. This means that they are so well positioned that they can take a loss on any product they want to compete with their competitors. Now, Microsoft and Slack both have a freemium approach, which means that people can use it for free and unlock potential features if they want to pay. But if we compare Microsoft's free tier with Slack's, Microsoft just makes you feel stupid for picking Slack. So what's the key takeaway here? Think about whether or not your client or your employer is equipped with a larger treasure chest than your competitors. If so, is there a way for them to absorb the cost to attract more customers that you can eventually upsell later on? Now, the second strategy is around product bundling. Now, since Microsoft has spent decades building new apps and reinvesting into their own Windows OS, it has naturally built a moat. Now, if you didn't know what a moat is, in business context, a moat just simply refers to a business's ability to maintain a competitive edge in the industry. This moat is built upon its entire suite of apps, including Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, and many more. Now, this means that Microsoft can drown any of its competitors by simply bundling all their apps together by extending their feature set and utility vertically and horizontally. So what's the key takeaway? Ask yourself, can your client or stakeholder bundle more features or offerings together to increase the perceived value for their customers? Now, the third strategy is price and product anchoring. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Microsoft Teams landing page. So over here, we can see the Microsoft Teams landing page. I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom out so you can see more of the page itself. Now, I want you to have a think about, as I scroll through this landing page, what is the strategy you think Microsoft has implemented on this landing page? So at the top, we have the uh, hero section that simply says Microsoft Teams. We have two CTAs, sign up for free and see plans and pricing. As we scroll further down, you can see that they break out the different use cases. So I might just zoom in so you can see that. Home, business, enterprise, education. You scroll further down and it's really just a breakdown of the key features within Microsoft Teams. So you can meet, you can call, you can collaborate and you can chat, okay? So that's really the entire landing page. I want you to have a quick think about it. What is the key strategy here? And remember, the context is, this is the landing page for Microsoft Teams. Have a think about it. This is what I take away from the design. 
So we obviously know that Microsoft's moat and their main competitive product is Microsoft 365, which is all their apps bundled together. But on the Microsoft Teams landing page, there is no real reference of it. It's all just about Microsoft Teams. Now over here, we can see that there are two CTAs, one for signing up for free and the other to see plans and pricing. From my understanding, these two CTAs are targeting somewhat the same persona or maybe even two personas at a different stage of the customer journey. So there is always going to be customers and users who wanna try a product out for free first. Now, they also might be a different persona, which might be a very small to medium business or might even be a freelancer that's looking for a platform to message and communicate with their clients. They're not ready to pay yet because they might be more price sensitive. So they have a CTA for that. But then they also have a CTA for people who are ready to actually pay for a product because they know that Microsoft have a lot of products, a lot of apps, and they're reliable and they're trustworthy. So the CTA is this one, which is plans and pricing, are targeting for people who are ready to pay right now and are prioritizing an efficient onboarding process, just get me the product right away, then trying to save a few cents here and there. So a totally different buying behavior. So if we click into the plans and pricing, this is where we can see that they are using pricing and product anchoring. So here from the Microsoft Teams landing page, you can see that they are pushing the Microsoft Teams Essentials, which is only $4 a month. Now, if we go to over to Slack and we go over to pricing, you can see that Slack, the minimum is $7.25 per month. So already they are anchoring their pricing to a lower price point, which also includes a little bit of price anchoring is that for only $2 extra, you can get everything in Microsoft Teams, but you also get all this other stuff from Microsoft whiteboards to hundreds of collaborative apps and everything else in their Microsoft 365 suite. So you can see that they are intentionally on this page, people who are interested in paying right now, they're not tie kickers, they're not time wasters, People who are sitting on the fence, who are potentially comparing Slack with Microsoft Teams, they're bundling it and they're actually trying to anchor people and try to persuade people in upgrading and upselling them into the Microsoft 365 Business Basic plan. Now, obviously, I think there have been a lot of stakeholders who are part of this decision. There is a conflict of interest right here. We are saying that this one is most popular, but we're putting a lot of value in this one. So we are making it a little bit harder for people to decide which package to go with. but you can see that they are trying their best to anchor people into deciding that the Microsoft Teams package or the entire Microsoft 365 Business Basic package is the more valuable one. Now, as you can see, Microsoft uses anchoring in pricing and product strategy to make any competitor, including Slack themselves, look like a terrible business decision. In other words, making you feel stupid. Now think about it, the Slack Pro membership is $8.75. Microsoft Teams alone is $4 USD and Microsoft Office 365 with all the apps is $6 USD. As you can see, the design decisions and the timely manner of where they make these comparisons is evident that their goal is to convert those that might be sitting on the fence. So what's the key takeaway? Well, when you are comparing your product with others, don't try fight head to head. Reframe and repackage the comparison by reframing your competitor's moat or USP, which is short for unique selling proposition, into just one other offering that you have. It increases the perceived value for your business, but it reduces the desirability for others. Now the fourth strategy, enterprise sales versus product growth. In 2016, the CEO of Slack publicly said he is not interested in hiring salespeople. It follows on with Butterfield, the CEO said, Slack intends to keep relying on its viral growth and some paid advertising to sell its software to businesses, a strategy that has hardly ever worked in enterprise software. Now, there are definitely companies out there that are now worth billions, starting with a capital B with zero sales teams like Alassia 
ESPN. But in this situation, Slack's biggest competitor is Microsoft, and they are equipped with thousands of sales reps aggressively pushing their products to enterprise clients. When your competitors are loaded with cash and determination, you can't live in your own little bubble. Now, if you ask me, that's a slow and steady death. So what's the key takeaway? Always, always, and always understand how your competitors are positioned in all areas in the business, such as product, marketing, and the support channels, so you can capitalize on their weaknesses. Now, one of my favorite quotes from Art of War by Sun Tzu is so relevant in this scenario. Attack him where he is unprepared, appear where you are not expected. Now, ultimately, the final one is strategically targeting a different market. Now, ultimately, Teams has leveraged their industry experience, reputation, and existing customers and relationships to differentiate themselves from Slack as an enterprise-grade application. They position themselves as a more secure and more serious application for communication and collaboration. From what I can see, Slack realizes their competition and is trying to evolve and reposition itself as a digital HQ and not just a communication platform. They are trying to own more of the collaboration space just like the Office 365. Now, in the end, I think the market is big enough for multiple players. Slack was also acquired by Salesforce in 2021 for $27 billion, which means that they do have a bigger treasure chest to play with. However, the question now stands is, can Slack prove to Salesforce that it can maintain its position and show to be a positive return on investment for the $27 billion price tag? Now that's it for this video guys. If you learned something, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans. And if you want to learn more, make sure to click on this video and I will see you in another video very soon. Okay, all right, again, a moat is really in business, ah, Microsoft-y. Uh.